This video is made in the memory of my mother, beloved daughter, wife, sister, friend, and mother to the people that were part of a short life. Well, I heard some disagreements that it would be better to do a comics series review of Asterix or Gas Gaston Lagave series that are probably more favored by her. And well, they're great candidates for uh, next year. I think my m my mother rather had the preferred that I move uh, moved on. So so here is number three of my personally top ten of European fantasy comics. Tower Dobbert is one of my favorite comic series of both my mother, sister, and myself. And we can in a way include my mother's husband in it as well, as the artist Piet Wein worked with the studio t with studio toner that in a way created his own favorite comic series, Tom Poos. So let's go over the, the two creators. The artist, Piet Wein, as stated, worked for Toner Studios and many, thing, and many things he drew he wasn't credited for. He worked on series like Panda and his most famous work before our subject was Buck and Popperdine. But he also worked on many more realistic series itself like Frank the Flying Dutchman and did draw a few comics for the gold magazine Tina. The writer, Tom Roop, worked for the weekly Dutch magazine, Donald Duck, until he became its head director after 10 years and managed to com convince the other directors that, the, that the Piet Wijn's art deserved a place in the magazine. Roop was also the writer of the, of the humorous comic series about the history of the Netherlands. But the series we talk about would of course become Tower Dobbert, a small, stout elder, elderly man that traveled the world but Jusik was content to travel the, the lowlands simply because he hasn't visited every corner of the land. With his knapsack in the hand, or bridle, for the Americans that he in, inherited in Ayat from his grandfather, the half sorceress, out of that bridle he could pull anything he needed to get out, out of a tough situation. At his first appearance, he escorted the spoiled princess Pauline as her caretaker and teacher, unaware that the spurred villain Ludo Lovehart tried to abduct her and hold her for, han for, handsome, for ransom. In the end, Dawe and a few innocents were captured instead, so it was for Pauline, with the aid of the Bible, the Bindle, to save them and learn to be a better person in the, in the process. The reaction was surprisingly positive, and so a second adventure was quickly made, where Dawe discovered a kingdom where animals walked and dressed like humans and of course lived in peace, until Ludo Lovehart exposed the wolves to the pleasures of the flesh. Uh, uh, he convinced the wolves that roasted animals tasted good. Hmm. Doesn't sound really better. It ended well and Ludo fled the kingdom, but the casualties were at least a chicken and a hare. When the story was pub published in the album, in album form, it became the series best sold album to this date. And while it's fun, I really can't see it. 16 out of 23 albums that came are standalone stories. Some even sported more than one. They often played in the in the 7th century uh, West Germany or the Lower Lands, very often on masked smugglers and corrupt politicians. A thing that I like more when I get older. When I got older, Dauer had quite a few traveling companions, like Dodo, Nama. And a personal favorite, the wizard son Beef and his cousins. Not that wizards and witches were an uncommon sight in the series, like the treacherous witch Vredula, the frenzy wizard occultist. Uh, after the meeting of Beef, the witches of the day before yesterday. Until Dower met Beef in 1984, the magic rules were not that well established. Then, after Beef, there were books that could portray living creatures and living paintings by the norm. And wizards did, didn't cast spells because they didn't speak uh, spoke words. They only had enough for a single finger, uh, finger gesture and thing, a man mannerism that Beef and his father Sakratov called Fliffen. Beef was a wizard kid of a young age of 900 years. And after they were left, his cousins were asked for a 100 year old sleepover. Beef and his cousins Domoli and Kaifje proved really popular as they showed up in six more albums, two standalones 
and four and a four parter where Dower had to collect the children from a place they had a ten year old long sleepover by the colleagues of both the parents of the kid of the children. Wrote the man, flipped himself ten years in the future to not insult their the colleagues for not entrusting them and promised to turn back the time when Dow returned with the, with the children. Dow collected Tomoli from Siberia, Pif from, Pif from Japan, where the boy had a girlfriend, ah, and Kaifje by a tribe of Native Americans. Somewhere in the middle of the series, Piet Wein had a stroke that paralyzes her right hand, of arm, paralyzes right arm. So he learned to draw from, uh, from scratch with his left. Uh, the artist died at uh, 2010, at the age of 81. Laura Dobbert has a few albums published in countries like Spain, Germany, and, it, and if it was in English, it should have been sold under the name Danny Doodle, like in, Portig like in Portugal. Only in Denmark is the series as popular as in the Netherlands, where it's known as Camelpot. It is uh, known as Old Beard. Nonetheless, it's a fun fairy tale like series that you can easily show to younger readers. A thing one can't say for most modern fantasy media these days. Next month we go over a French fantasy series, The Quest of the Time Bird.